Studio One has just announced support for Dolby Atmos. What does this mean for you as a music producer, songwriter, or artist? You might have mixed feelings such as, wow, this is really exciting. And yet you might be extremely nervous thinking, what in the world is an object pad? In this video, we're gonna demystify spatial audio and Dolby Atmos. This is Alex from Alex Pro Mix. Let's go. Hey everyone, what's up? This is Alex from Alex Pro Mix. And in this video, we're going to take a deep dive into spatial audio and immersive mixing with Studio One. For that, I've pulled up the demo session and the purpose of this video is to demystify a bunch of terms that you'll experience and encounter when working in the world of Dolby Atmos. Just to give you guys a little background about myself, I got into immersive audio mixing in 2021 after Apple made the announcement that they were going to support Dolby Atmos as an immersive format moving forward. I invested into a 714 studio. That means that I have 12 speakers set up. They're calibrated and tuned to the Dolby spec. And I've been providing Dolby Atmos mixing and remastering services for independent artists and labels over the past two years to the point where I've delivered over 200 Dolby Atmos mixes. And I've learned so much and I want to make sure that you guys who are getting new into spatial audio overcome the hurdles that I had to overcome. So if you will, allow me to explain a lot of things that are really simple to understand, but can be a little daunting if you've never heard of them. All right. With that said, let's dive into the session. All right, cool. So here we have Studio One, and this is called the Dolby Atmos tutorial. This comes in built in with the software. If you don't have it, it will show up as an available download. All right, and I haven't touched it. I haven't done anything to it other than just loaded up the session. All right, so here on the left, we have tracks. We have drums, kibasa, percussions, bass layer, bass, guitar, triangle, chords, Atmos staff, and lead synth. Pretty basic stuff. All right, so to the very right, there are three main tracks. There's the main track, but then you also have a headphones track. Why is that important? We'll see in a minute. And then you have this other thing called a renderer. And if you click on that, you see this graphic of a 3D guy there with some ping pong balls, right? With their colors and what's all this. So that's the purpose of this video. Let me go ahead and hit play first. I'll put on my headphones and we'll figure this thing out together. All right, here we go. I'll play from the top. All right, so let's take this down way down, way down to the basics, okay? So let's go ahead and hide the renderer. Now you're gonna notice here on the track icons that there's are, there are two shapes, there's a circle and then there's a square. And you might wonder why are some tracks showing this way and others are not. All right, so here, if you click on this icon, if you double click on it, you're gonna get this thing called the surround pattern. Now that's on the uh, shape that looks like a circle. If you click on the shape that looks like a square, you're gonna see something called an object panner. And you might wonder, well, what's the dif difference between a surround panner and an object panner? All right, so this is where it starts to get a little hairy. All right, so let me go ahead and take these off and explain a little bit the difference between the bed and an object. If we take a look at the Dolby render, you're gonna notice a few things. For one thing, you're gonna notice that you are in this 3D environment, this sphere, if you will, all right? Now you can't necessarily click and drag anything here. It's just basically a visual representation. Now on the top where it says bed format, you're gonna have a couple of options, but the most common option that you're gonna select and choose, and it is chosen by default already, is 7.1.2. Now for simplicity, I'm just gonna say 7.1.2. Now if you add up those numbers, those are 10 channels, and those 10 channels are represented by these 10 channels right here. So you basically have left, right, center, that's three, four, five, six, seven. You have seven surround channels. That's the first number right here, seven. The second number, dot one, is the low frequency effect, which in Adobe Atmos Music Studio or uh, mixing stage for film and cinema, you're gonna have subwoofers 
where you can assign or you can feed audio to those subwoofers for what's called the low frequency effect. So when you're watching a movie and there's an explosion and your seats are shaking, well, guess what? There are subwoofers the size of this couch right here just hung up in the back corners of that theater shaking the room because an audio engineer decided that when this explosion happens, I'm going to add a little extra juice to the low end. And guess what? You're watching the movie, you get this immersive experience. So that's this low frequency effect. And then you have left top middle and right top middle. That's represented by ceiling channels. So if we hide this, you're going to see that on the surround panel, the ceiling channels are these right here. Anytime that I adjust the elevation, which can be done with this uh, parameter or up here, you're basically feeding it to the uh, dot two channels, which are two channels, left and right overhead channels. So that's called the bed. These are 10 channels. These are fixed channels. And the bed is represented on a track by using the native surround panel. This is the same thing that happens in Pro Tools. I believe in Logic and the Steinberg DAWs like Nuendo and Cubase. When you use the surround panel, it feeds it to this bed. Cool. Now, if you are new to immersive mixing, you can set all your tracks to bed and start panning, and you're gonna hear a surround sound experience, either on headphones or on speakers, it's fine. So in this demo session by Personas, they've assigned the Kibasa to a binaural panner, which is here, object panner, the base layer and the triangle, these are all into object panners, okay? Now object panners are also gonna show up here on this diagram as a, as a shape, as a ping pong ball, if you will. So if I move this around this guy, you're gonna see that reflected here on the left. So let me go ahead and bring these guys together so you can actually see that. There you go. So as I'm playing the music, if I create some panning automation, that's gonna be reflected around this guy. Now, does that mean that uh, you have to assign a track to an object for it to be in surround? No, you can, everything here going to the bed is already in surround. But the object panner can break away from that surround bed, that 7.12 bed, by choosing different binaural modes. And we'll get to that in a minute. So the first thing to demystify is what's a bed, what's an object? Well, a bed, again, is a, using a surround panner in the DAW that's going to automatically assign it to these 10 channels. And using an object breaks it away from those 10 channels. All right, what's next? Well, we have speakers. All right, well, in this demonstration, I'm not hooked up to my 714 studio, but Dolby recommends that if you're going to build a music studio for Dolby Atmos mixing, you need to have a minimum 714 configuration. That means seven speakers in the horizontal plane, an LFE, which is going to be your sub or subwoofers, and four channels in the overheads. So that's going to be four speakers in the ceiling. You can also have a 916 and even more. I've been to studios, the studio in Dubai, I believe that was 13. One six, if I'm correct. And so, yeah, there was just a lot of speakers. Um, the more speakers just means the higher fidelity that when you pan things in the room, you're actually going to hear where they're coming from. All right. And then you have headphone binaural. Well, what's this? Now let's go ahead and dive into the binaural settings. So headphone binaural allows you to start playing around with the spatial audio tools by using headphones. Okay. So let's, let's do that. I'm going to put on my headphones. I'm just going to play the kibasa and play the shaker, and I'm going to pan it left, center, right, and you guys are going to hear that on headphones. Here we go. Okay, pretty straightforward. When you pan it to the left, you hear it towards the left. When you pan it to the center, it's in the center. When you pan it to the right, you hear it towards the right. This is typical stereo behavior. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Listen to the tonal quality and the space of the shaker as I begin to pan it toward the surround channels. Here we go. The moment I deviate away from this left channel into the surround channel, it's like adding a room reverb effect, like at 5%. Listen to it again. From right there, from right here, you start bleeding into that binaural effect or that spatialization. Now, I can make that a little bit more extreme. Let's go left surround and set this to far, and we'll set the right surround to far as well. All right, let's try that again. Mm -hmm. 
right there. Not only does it sound like further, but the high frequency information sounds different. And that's important to note that as you start playing around with the binaural settings, you're not only adjusting space depth, but you're also affecting the tonal changes of that sound. Now let's see what happens if we elevate the sound and pan it over us into the dot two channels. All right. So for that, go to the render again and then uh, left top middle. I'm going to set this too far and right top middle. I'm going to set this too far. Cool. Here we go. Again, we'll start off left center, right. There's no binaural effects. It's a standard stereo stuff. Major difference, big difference. It's like you just put a reverb plug in and put it at 20% wet. Okay. So that's, that's the experience of binaural. Now let's go back to talking about objects. Okay. So let's say that we want the shaker to be panned in the left, in front of us. Okay. In front of this little guy right here, we want this pan in front of this guy. However, we don't want it to be dry, right? We don't want these uh, left, right, center to be on binaural mode off. We want it to have a, a mid setting or a far setting, but we still want to pan it to the front. Well, that's when you use an object and you break away from the bed. So in order to do that, we're going to right click on this and instead of using surround panner, which is going to pan it to the bed, the 10 channels of the bed, we're going to select spatial object panner and notice how the shape is going to change. It goes from a circle to a square and you basically have the same parameters where you can pan it across the front, across the back. You can adjust the elevation plane, but you also have another option here with size and we'll get into that in a minute. All right. So the shaker is now assigned to an object and it's called Kibasa. All right. And binaural mode, we'll leave that off and we'll listen to the three different settings, which is going to be off. It's going to be off near mid and far. Here we go. So notice the drastic differences between off, which is just stereo dry, near, some binaural effect, mid, more, and then far, which is a lot. Like it doesn't just sound like there's a room reverb applied to it, but also the high frequency information changes. So by using an object, you can break away from the bed binaural structure, if you will, and use any binaural mode that you want on that specific instrument. Now, let me pause right there and talk a little bit about the headphone experience versus the studio experience. I remember when Pro Tools enabled you to create immersive mixes on headphones by using the Dolby renderer. This right here for two years was a standalone application, which basically meant that you needed to route audio from the DAW to this application. This application would then go to your audio interface with multi-channel outputs. You would plug up the speakers and you have to have the room tuned and you still do. Now, for a good few months, I just plugged my headphones in and I was doing mixes and I was like, wow, this is cool. This is awesome. This sounds amazing. I took my mix to a Dolby Music Studio and I hit play and I was completely uh, disappointed. <laughs> And shocked that, uh, you know, my mix, my headphone mix translation didn't translate to speakers. And the best way I can explain it is that when I was hearing other commercial mixes done in immersive in the studio with speakers, there was just this energy coming out of the room. It's like you're in a, you're in front of a PA system and the bass is there and it's just like you're surrounded by sounds. But when I played my mix that I created on headphones, it was really weak, really, really weak, you know? Uh, in fact, ideas that I had about putting like slap delay to a snare and panning that behind me, those were all pretty good concepts, but the execution wasn't there because I didn't know what I was listening for when I was just mixing on headphones. And so it wasn't until I sat down 
and actually listen to music mixed in immersive audio in a music studio through speakers where it actually clicked and made sense. And at that point I knew, all right, if I need to go into immersive, I need to go in it all the way, which basically meant an investment. I needed to invest into the gear, do my research, make the measurements in the room. I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but trust me, it was a lengthy process. And that's typically the process for anybody that wants to get into immersive. You can learn the tools using headphones, but when it comes time to actually delivering mixes for clients, charging for a service, I highly, highly recommend booking or renting a studio that's already built with immersive. Now, it's not necessarily part of this demonstration right here, but I do want to get, make you guys aware that there's a website where you can find studios near you called Dolby Atmos Music Studios. And on there, you can type in the zip code, you can type in the state, you can type in the country, and it will list a number of studios that are certified by Dolby or that have followed their guidelines to building their studios according to the Dolby specifications. That's what I use for building my studio and I'm on the list. But if you guys are not in Southern California or you guys are in Dubai or you guys are in someplace in India or even South America, check that website first to find a Dolby Music Studio. Trust me, book an hour, book two hours, get, you know, like familiar with the environment and like you'll just understand what I'm talking about. All right. All right, guys. So that's all the time that we have for this video. I really hope you enjoyed and learned a lot about spatial audio. If you're an audio professional, this is, in my opinion, the next gradual step for your career. If you're a newbie to spatial audio, I hope this video demystified a bunch of things like object, panning, 3D, immersive, Dolby, the basic stuffs, right? Now, before you leave, I have a free giveaway for you. I just recently published my free guide to spatial audio. It's completely free. I'll leave a link on the video description. You guys can access that. If you want to learn more about spatial audio, I highly recommend it. In this guide, I talk about the difference between channel-based mixing and object-based mixing, which is what I've been talking about all along in this presentation. Also, if this is your first time watching, I invite you to subscribe to my channel hit like and the notification so you can be notified anytime new videos are uploaded. And if you know someone that is using Studio One and they're curious about spatial audio, please forward this video over to them because I know that they're going to gain great value from it. All right, guys, that's all the time that we have. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again real soon. Peace.